So today we're going to be looking at how we can get open high low close candle data from Coinbase for varying historical lengths. So right here I've got the like 19 minute candles just to be awkward and I'll show you how you can aggregate the time series that Coinbase gives you into other particular bar durations depending on what you want. So let's go ahead and open up a Python file here. So I'll call mine tutorial.py and we'll want to do some importing here. So you want to import requests, you'll want to import pandas as pd, you'll want to import time and you want to import date time. So from date time import date time itself and time delta is another class that we'll be using. All right. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and look at the Coinbase API itself, just so we can get an idea of what we're doing and get the API URL, that kind of thing. So the Coinbase API is on here. It's on, well, you can look at docs.pro.coinbase.com and that will give you the documentation for it. Right here, you can see the endpoint that we're going to be using, which is the get historic rates endpoint. So it's slash products slash product ID. So this will be something like, you know, BTC, USD, Uni, USD, ETH, USD, something like that. And then the candles. And in return, we get a list of lists here. For some reason, they give the data low, high, open, close rather than open, high, low, close. So that's something to watch out for when you're putting the data together after you've received it. We'll make sure we do that right. And the parameters we have to give it are the start time in ISO format, which is easy to do in Python the end time in ISO format and the granularity in seconds. Now the granularity can only be one of these values. So, you know, a minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, six hours, and one day. If you want candles of a different size, you'll have to aggregate them. And I'll show you how to do that in this video. Say how to aggregate the one minute bars into two minute bars, so on and so forth. There is a catch that the maximum candles that you can request in one single request is 300 candles. If you want more than that, you'll have to wrap the whole thing in a for loop and just keep going. But for now, let's just keep things simple and we'll go ahead and grab the API URL. So if we go up here, there should be an API URL. There we go. So we're just going to grab this. We'll need that later on and we'll put it inside here. So we'll say API URL is equal to this. And then we'll also just keep the name of our symbol up here that we want. So sim is going to be, I'll look for BTC USD. You can have this as any other thing that you like. We'll also want to define the bar size that we're looking for. So the granularity. So I'm going to define bar size is equal to 300. So we'll go for the five minute bars here. And let's go ahead and start defining those parameters. So the end time, right? So if we look on our parameters over here, the end time is going to be just right now. If we want, say, the previous 300 five minute bars, the end time is going to be right now, like right this second. So to do that in Python, all you do is you do date time. So what's it? Time end is equal to date time dot now. So if I go ahead and print that out there, time end, you'll see what that looks like. So it just gives you time in a particular format. Now we need it in ISO format. So to do that, you can just use ISO format on the end there. So dot ISO format. And that'll make sure that it's in the correct format for Coinbase to accept. So it looks like this. You can see they've got the T in the middle here. Now we want to hold off on converting that because we need to actually calculate the start time. So we need to figure out what this start time is here. And we'll do that based on the end time. And in order to do that calculation, this needs to be a date time object rather than an ISO format string. Okay. So let's now go ahead and figure that out. So we'll set delta is equal to time delta and we'll do minutes equals five. So all I've done is I've created a time delta here 
with the same duration as our bar. So it's five minutes, 300 seconds, five minutes, same thing. If you're doing hourly or daily data, you want to do exactly the same thing. So you could set a time delta, maybe hours equals two or days equals one or whatever you'd like. And what the date time module allows us to do is it allows us to do arithmetic with this. So what we can do is we can say time start is equal to time end minus, and then we'll do brackets here to make sure the calculation works. We'll do 300 times delta. So what that will do is it will calculate the time, in this case, 1500 minutes ago, which allows us to capture that full 300 bar limit. Now, if you don't want 300 bars, if you only want 30 bars for whatever reason, you can just change this number here and that'll work just fine. So let's go ahead and print out time start and just see if it, it looks approximately right at least. So 1500 minutes ago, yeah, roughly a day ago, sounds about right to me. So now we've got all our three parameters here. We've got the bar size, which is granularity, we've got the end time and we've got the start time. Let's go ahead and put them all in ISO format now. So we're not gonna be doing any more calculations with this time start, so we can convert that to ISO format. I'll just do it here on a new line so it's more clear. Time start is equal to time start dot ISO format. And we'll do the exact same thing here with time end. All right, and then we'll print those out. Those are now in ISO format and Coinbase can read them. Great, so now let's go ahead and actually request our information given these parameters. We'll want to set all of these variables up inside a dictionary so that we can easily pass that in. So that's fairly easy to do. We just set parameters here and we'll open brackets and we'll say start is equal to time start. So we're just using the parameters that they give us here. So we want to start, end, and granularity. Those are our three particular parameters. End, that's gonna be time end. And then granularity. And that's just gonna be bar size for us. Okay, we'll wrap that up there. Now let's go ahead and do our request. So we'll go up here and we'll say data is equal to requests.get. So if you remember on here, it's a get request. So request.get obviously. And then we'll give it the URL that it's supposed to go to. So in our case, it's gonna be an F string because we want to put some variables in there. In particular, we want to include the API URL. And then it's dash products so dash products, dash product ID, dash candles. So let's do that. So dash products, and then we want our sim. So our sim up here, we want to put that in there, and then candles, and that should work just fine. Let's just check our API URL there, make sure, yeah. Sometimes the, the slashes can be a bit annoying if you, if you don't, if you miss them off. Okay. And then we'll need to provide the parameters in here. So we'll say params equals parameters. And we'll also provide some headers in here. I think it actually does this automatically, but just to be sure that we're actually going to receive a JSON output rather than any other kind of file format, I'll put the headers in here so it knows. So you just do headers is equal to, and then content type application slash JSON. You'll be familiar with that if you've ever done any kind of REST API requests before. All this means is that when we receive our response, we want it to be in JSON format, which is just a particular kind of file format that's quite handy to use in Python because it works much like Python dictionaries do. All right, let's go ahead and print on out this data here. So let's say print data.text and I'll not print out these times because we don't really need them. It 
Seems I got the URL slightly wrong there. I did mention that the forward slashes can be a bit frustrating if you miss one of them out. Let's try that again. There we go. So we've got this whole bunch of data. It's obviously very difficult to read in the current format, but we'll fix that in a second. So this is time in seconds since the 1st of January, 1970. That's just how dates work. Um, and then we've got low, high, open, close. Very important to remember that. So low, high, open, close. So let's put all this in a data frame so we can read it more carefully and then we'll be able to make more sense of it. So let's say, let's get rid of this first. Let's not print that out. And we'll say df for data frame is equal to pd dot data frame. So we're defining a new data frame. The input to that is going to be data dot json. And then we're going to want to supply the column header names so that they're not just numbers. So we'll say columns is equal to, and then we'll give it a list of strings. So the first one's time. And then let's check again. So low, high, open, close volume. Low, high, open, close, and volume. All right, then. So if we go ahead and print on out df, we should be able to check that. Obviously, I haven't spelled columns correctly there. There we go. So let's actually check that this is actually the low value. 9544955. Yep. And then that this one is the high. So 44982. Yep. And then open and close. You can't really check those. So we'll just hope that those are correct. Okay. So we've got all our data now nicely in this format. There are a few things that we could do to improve things though. Firstly is going to be sorting this out. So these are currently in a format which is quite readable for computers, but for us it's, it's not particularly nice. So let's sort that out. So let's say a new column here. So we'll say df date is equal to pd dot to underscore date time. And then we'll put in the time column here. And it's important to put unit equals seconds in here rather than the default, which I believe is like microseconds or even nanoseconds. You'll end up with some dodgy things if you don't put a unit in there. So if we print that on out, we'll see that we have a date here, which looks very reasonable considering our system clock. That looks about right. 21st of the 8th, 18. Yep, that is correct. All right, so we're now ready to just shuffle these columns a little around a bit, just so they're more familiar. I'm just gonna do that anyway. So we'll say df is equal to df, and then we provide a list of lists here. And in the first list, in that list of lists, you give it the order that you'd like your columns to be in. So I'm gonna say date, open, high, low, and close. I'm not particularly interested in volume, nor am I interested in the time column since we can't really read that as humans. And there we go. This is a much nicer date, open, high, low, close graph. So you can of course do this for any particular asset that you'd like. So let's say I switch this to ETH here. It'll do the same thing for ETH. These look like realistic numbers to me. You can change the time frame if you want. So for example, we can change the bar size here to say 60. So this will get minutely data. Now, obviously, if you do that, you want to change the time delta here. So to minutes equals one. And there you go. We've got minutely data now coming in for Ethereum. You could, I suppose, change this to seconds equals um, int and then bar size. And that will do things automatically for you. So if you put, um, say, 900 in here for the 15 minute bars, that should work automatically. And indeed it does. So we'll change this back to 60 here because one minute bars are easier for our purposes. 
Now, the next step that you might want to take is you might want to aggregate these into, say, two minute bars, depending on what kind of strategy you're running, what in particular you're using this data for. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to resample this, what I'm going to do is we're going to use df.resample. Now, in order to use df.resample, you need to have the date time as the index of the data frame. So first we'll have to do that before we can do any resampling. So we'll do df.set underscore index and then we'll set that as date and we'll say in place equals true. So you'll see what I mean here. It just sets that as the index of the whole thing and that way it can easily sort through and it knows what you're talking about, which is good. Okay, so now let's do our df is equal to df.resample. And then you give it the amount that you want to resample it to. So I'm gonna say two mins or two min. And then what you wanna call on this is dot ag. Now, dot ag is a very nice function that essentially lets us pick an aggregation function for each of the columns. So basically we can say for the open column, I would like to aggregate those two minutes to be just the first item. So from the open, you want the first one, obviously, because it's an open column. From the high, I want the max. From the low, I want the min. And from the close, I want the last. So it's just allowing us to select a dictionary of aggregation functions here. You could of course pick something completely random if you wanted to, you could say that, you know, you want the mean here, you want the mean to be the open, but that doesn't really make much sense. So we'll stick away with the first. Okay, uh, and then we'll close that one out like that. And then we can print our data frame and it should be readable at least. So if we print that out, there we go. We can see we have two minute bars here going all the way down. You can easily change that to something like three minute bars if I go here. There we go. You can see we're now in three minute bar territory and you can check certain things. So for example, you can check that the open here is the same as this one. Just to make sure that things are working properly. A few things that you might want to change here. So you can do df.resetIndex. And what this will allow you to do is to make the index a number rather than having the date time as the index. So if I do in place equals true here, that just makes it so it actually changes the data frame rather than returning a new one. You can see we've now got a number as the index and the date is now promoted to a full column which is much nicer. And you also might want to do df is equal to df.dropna. That will get rid of any null columns. You might not need it for Coinbase, but on some exchanges, they sometimes freak out and give you null data. And it's just nice to get rid of those nulls. You don't necessarily have to do that though. So that's how you can go ahead and get any kind of time frame, historical data for any given asset from Coinbase. If you want to get more than 300 bars, you have to go through and request them individually. So you could wrap this whole system up in a for loop and just keep taking your time delta off here. Taking your time delta off both the start and the end and then glue them all together. Fairly simple to do once you've got this set up.